I have a new flashlight in for testing today. It's the XT11 GT. This is just to show you what you get included in this particular kit. There's a micro USB charging cable. There's a spare O-ring seal. Hand strap is included. This has an adjuster in the center so you can attach it to your wrist. And you also get a supplied case with it. We'll have a closer look at that in a second. This is the front of the box. This just gives you some basic information. You do get a battery included with this. And we'll look on the side part, which will give us a few more details. 316 meters beam distance. There's the peak beam intensity. It's drop proof and IPX8 rated. Now on the back, this is quite useful information. This gives you the power outputs and run times approximately, and some more overviews of the features, which we'll get into in a short while. Now you can use the CR123A cells on this as well, but uh, you get a 18650 supplied. Now this is one user manual that you want to read because you can switch between the settings and adjust the button layout to suit your own personal taste. So you probably will have to read this if you've not used one of these Claris torches before with the three buttons. Now the supply case is quite nice quality. You have padding front and back feels like a neoprene material and inside it has a sort of waterproofing material which has been applied to it a sort of pvc coating d-ring on the back and we have a velcro fastening as well as a belt loop that's sewn into it too quite a nice case and as you'd expect it fits the torch perfectly Moving in a bit closer onto the torch itself now, we can see the Type 3 type anodized aluminium on this. Nice finish as you'd expect. You can unscrew the front and there is a, I believe, a self-defense uh, attachment that you can add to that. So that unscrews there. You can also get some other extras which we'll show you shortly. This is the cover for the micro USB charging port. So you don't need an extra charger with this. You can charge it in the torch. Make sure that's closed off to prevent water and dust getting in. On the bottom, these are the two switches. And we have uh, a rotating collar at the bottom here. This also has a hole in it, so you could attach the strap to that, or you could attach the strap to the bottom section. Now, unscrewing this, we have the protection here to pull that out, and you can start using the battery. Now the cell that this ships with is an unprotected one. You can see we have a spring there on both sides and there's one in the cap. This is unprotected, but you can use protected cells, um, but the output will drop down. They're having to use an unprotected IMR cell for the maximum 2000 lumens. Here you can see the power level indicator. You have three, it goes from green, then to amber, then to red, and it starts flashing red when it's under 10%. So you have good battery level indication on this torch. Now the main button will cycle through the power modes and you can push and hold to turn that off, or you can also go into the strobe modes. You have two strobe modes on this torch. I tend to reconfigure this so that you have instant access to the turbo and low modes on the two tail switches, but you can customize it how you want. You can put the strobe modes on those. Now this is just a very quick overview of some of the extras. I haven't tried the filters. You have a gun mount. There's a, a tail cap which you can screw which gives you a trigger so you can attach it to a rifle or something else. You also get a few diffusers. Hopefully I'll try and get one or two of those in to test them. Just have a look at those. Now this is the charging. I got just under one amp. It was fluctuating between 0.92 and 0.91 so it's close to the specification. Once it's finished charging, it cuts the power and it turns to green. This is a quick test that I'm doing. IPX8, so the torch will work underwater with absolutely no problems at all. Now what I'm going to do is compare it to the XT11S. And you can see here there's a slight difference in specification and runtime. The S actually has slightly longer beam distance and peak intensity. And we'll have a look why that is in a minute. They're quite similar, in fact almost identical in design. The 11S has a sort of gunmetal finish and there's some minor differences on the case and the GT being a bit longer. I also found that the collar locked on the S and not the GT for some reason. 
here you can see some very minor differences in the case molding at the top of the torch here. These aren't particularly significant, they've obviously just changed the design. Now moving in closer to look at the reflectors, they look identical but the LEDs are quite different and we'll see a significant difference in the light output between these two, much higher than I would normally expect. Here's a quick test, I have the GT on the left and the S on the right, I'm cycling through the power modes. You can see there's a sort of stronger intensity on the S but the GT has a wider beam pattern and this will become much more obvious when we go outside and test the torches outside. We're at a distance of about 100 foot now and I'm shining it down onto a shed. You see the GT first, notice the wide beam and field of view and I'm going to cycle through the power settings here right down to the minimum. Next onto the S you'll see the much more concentrated circular image in the middle but you get less peripheral and edge illumination with that torch. I was really surprised that there's such a significant difference between the two. Which you prefer of course will come down to your own personal taste. What I'm doing here now is using the Rofus TR20, I already reviewed that, and that's kind of a halfway house between the two. It seems to have a wider beam pattern than the S, but not as wide as the GT. Moving in a bit closer, this is a telephoto shot. So we've got the GT first, pay attention to the right hand side past the shed, and the S now. You'll see that the S is giving a brighter central area, but not as wide illumination. It's quite noticeable using the torches how, how much different they are in terms of the beam output. This is the Rofus coming up after the GT. You see the Rofus is kind of halfway again between the two, giving a bit more than the S. Closer up now, about eight foot, GT first, then the S. Same pattern repeated again. And now a 40 foot shot. This will give you an idea at slightly closer distances. We're on to the S now. You can see there's a big difference in the output. It's, it's concentrated in the middle, whereas we're back on the GT. And you see that brighter area illuminated in the middle extends much, much further than the S torch. This is a comparison with the Rofus. Again, it's kind of mid midway between the two. It gives a sort of halfway house between the two. So which you prefer is really down to your own personal taste. Now, I do really like this torch. I was surprised about the output. It is a very powerful torch, but it's spreading the beam out more. It gives you a nice wide illumination. And I like the button design and overall build quality is excellent. I really don't have any complaints on that side of things. So certainly one to recommend on that. If you already have the S, if there are enough changes here to warrant getting the GT, it depends on the type of torch that you want. You could get the diffuser um, if you want a wider beam, but if I were making a choice, I would probably go for the GT first over the S, considering there's only about 10, 15 pounds difference in price.